Welcome back to Grounded Haven. Today I'm going to be giving you a May tour of our vegetable garden. We're about a month past our last frost date, so a lot of our summer garden has already been planted out, and we have been harvesting a lot of spring vegetables from the garden as well, which I've been showing in a few videos. A lot of things have been newly transplanted and have been settling in nicely and everything's just looking really green. So we're gonna start in our raised bed area and I'm gonna start with this bed over here, which has some determinate tomatoes. We have eight tomato plants in here and we planted these in a recent video. They're looking really good and have already grown a little bit since we planted them a few weeks ago. In between our tomato plants, we also planted either basil or marigold. Um, our basils did get hit very hard with slugs, so they look pretty bad. Um, I think we might have also had a chilly night. I don't think we got a frost, but maybe it was in like the high 30s or something for a night. So there might be a little bit of cold damage as well. But you can see just how ragged these leaves are from the slugs having chewed them all up. Which is really sad because they were so beautiful when we put them out. But I think they'll bounce back. They, they'll grow from all of this new growth. So yeah, we'll see how they do. Here's another tomato plant that's looking really nice and bushy. I have these stakes here just so that they don't blow over, but soon I am gonna come in and tie them to our welded wire like trellis over here so that they are a little bit more stable. But for now, they don't really need it because they're not tall enough or have heavy fruit where they're gonna topple over. So this is just to keep them growing a little bit straighter for now, and I'll probably remove them later. A few of them are starting to put on just the very beginnings of their flower buds now too. So that's the first bed. In the next one, it is half empty right now. In this half, we had had bok choy, which we harvested all of. And then here we have some kale we've been harvesting off of that for the last month or so. They're just like really nice baby leaves right now, really tender and sweet. Soon I'm going to cut all of this kale out and make space because for this bed I'm planning on planting corn and that's going to go in pretty soon. So maybe in the next week or two this kale will be gone. But we've harvested a lot off of it and it was also kind of like a last minute addition. I just had this big soil bag of kale in the greenhouse that I was almost just going to throw away and feed to the chickens. But I popped it in here and I'm so glad I did because it's been doing so well. In the next bed, we have mostly shallots. The shallots go from here all the way up to here, so it's like maybe two thirds of the bed. And then right here, we have some red onions. The shallots are looking really good. They've bounced back really nicely from that cold snap that we had that killed off the tops of almost all of these plants, but they were still alive and have grown back. And look how nice and thick that's looking. In between some of the rows, I had planted some radishes and we've harvested a lot of those, a few bunches off of this bed alone. And we have just a few left over and those are going to be ready to be harvested soon. On the other side of the bed at the base of this cattle panel trellis, we had planted our yard long beans here. So on this side, we have either green or red, and then on the other side, we have the other color. So just a few plants of each of them, but that's going to be plenty of food. And then our beautiful sorrel plant. Those leaves are huge. I think this plant is in its third year, and it just gets a little bit bigger every year. So this is due to be cut back and harvested pretty soon. In the last bed on this side, we have a ton of garlic. So all of this is chestnut red hardneck garlic and it's looking so good. And it is actually starting to form its garlic scapes. So we're gonna have a nice garlic scape harvest here soon, which is a really nice bonus crop when you're growing hardneck garlic. And I see a ton of them forming on these plants right now. On this side of the cattle panel trellis, we have a kukuzi gourd over here which is looking really good growing really quickly and then i had just popped in like a leftover tomato plant but it's not looking so good so i don't know if this one's gonna make it got a little bit more garlic on this corner and then i have an empty space here i'm not sure what i'm gonna plant there just yet 
look at how thick this garlic stock is. Isn't that crazy? I have a feeling that's gonna be a really big bulb. I'm so excited to harvest garlic. We're just a couple of months away from that. So let me circle back around to the front and I'm gonna start in this front bed, which has our peppers. And we have 17 pepper plants in here, which is a really strange number. I don't know how we ended up with that. I think originally I had planned on only doing 10 plants. I was gonna do five on each side, so just two rows. But then I realized there was a lot of extra space, so I just threw in more peppers because I think peppers can really be planted a little bit tighter. So I ended up with, for the most part, three rows of peppers. We had a little scrap of welded wire, so we put in just like a really quick makeshift trellis. So we put peppers on two sides of those so that we can tie them as they grow older. And then for a lot of the other peppers, we just have some stakes because I think that will be enough support for them. We'll just have to tie them to the stakes as they grow, which we probably have to do soon because they are already starting to get pretty tall. And you can see that they are starting to form some flowers here. For our stakes, we either just took some natural sticks that we had around the property since those are free and easy to use. Um, but we also just have some store-bought stakes as well that you would buy from the store. I also have some marigolds on the corners of these beds, which will add a nice color. And then I popped in a couple of parsley plants as well for the edges. Some of these marigolds are starting to form buds, so we're going to have flowers soon. And then down the middle of this bed, I planted radishes and carrots. We harvested some of those radishes in the last video. And then the carrots are growing pretty nicely now. Still a little bit until those are ready to harvest, but they are doing really well. I also have a couple of random leeks that I need to harvest soon. They're getting pretty nice and big now. And then I have an arugula plant in this corner. This was left over from the fall and I'm just letting it flower so that I can harvest the seeds because I am out of arugula seeds. So this is just one plant and if I can save the seeds properly, then I'll get plenty of seeds off of it. In this bed, we have our lettuce and kale that we've been harvesting from. We just took a whole big bunch from here, so it looks really sparse right now. Um, but soon we're going to clear out this bed anyway. This is going to be our eggplant and peanut bed. So in the next couple of weeks, we'll probably do that at the same time that we're going to plant the corn. In the next bed, we have some herbs over here. In the front, we have some green onions. Behind that, we have cilantro. And we just picked from this like maybe three or four days ago, and it has already grown back. So in another couple of days, we can probably do another harvest. And then we have dill coming up behind that. And then pretty much the rest of this bed is leeks, besides this one really big sorrel plant, which I probably need to cut back because it's starting to take over where I have leeks planted. So behind there, there are leeks under there. But they are doing really well. They started off so puny and they're looking nice now. We don't have much going on on this cattle panel trellis yet. We are going to probably put a winter melon here, but I'm still waiting for those seeds to germinate. They can take a while. On this last bed, where we have the other side of this cattle panel trellis, I did plant a seedling for Armenian yarn-long cucumbers. But I don't know what happened. They just like, it just completely died after I transplanted it. We just seeded them again a few inches over. So hopefully those will germinate there. I had another leftover tomato that I popped on this other side that is also looking a little bit sad, but we'll see if it does anything. In this part of the bed, we have our soybeans. So those have been coming up. A few of them were eaten by slugs. So these ones look okay, but we did have just a couple. You can see here, it looks like they germinated, but the tops were completely eaten off. So we just re-sewed a couple of spaces but most of them are coming up pretty nicely now. I'm really curious to see what those are gonna look like as they grow. At the end, we have one dahlia plant that actually overwintered from last year, and it was really pretty last year. It has these dark leaves, but the flowers are bright yellow, so that's gonna be a nice little flower for the end of this bed. And then on the other side of this bed, I popped in three tomato plants. These are Roma tomato plants, which I believe are determinates. So I just put tomato cages for these because I don't think that they're gonna get really huge. And I think the cages will provide nice support, especially since Roma tomatoes are supposed to be very productive and have a lot of fruit on them. So I'd like for them to have a good amount of all around support. 
these tomato cages wouldn't be great if they were like indeterminate tomatoes that got really tall because they are not tall enough to support but for a determinate tomato I think it'll be fine. I also popped in a couple of watermelons at the edge of this bed so that they could trail off like into our pathway. The same thing happened with one of these seedlings where it just like really died back. It looks like it might come back. This new leaf looks pretty good. I really don't know what happened here so if you know then Please comment down below. We did reseed right over here a few inches away just in case this one doesn't make it through. But then we have another one that we transplanted at the same time that looks pretty fine. So I'm not really sure why some of them just died and the other ones didn't. In this middle area we have our beds that have blueberries and strawberries and then we have our green stock. So here's a look at the blueberries. They are actually forming berries right now. This bush is a few years old, so it's a little bit bigger. And then this one we just planted last year. It's just basically like a whip right now, so hopefully it grows a little bit bigger this year. These strawberries, though, have been just blowing my mind. I'm gonna move these leaves aside and I think he'll be pretty impressed. But look at this plant. It is absolutely covered in baby berries. Like there are more berries than there are leaves by like a long shot. It is absolutely insane. Here's another one. You can see all of those baby berries, but it is just so cool. These plants have been here for a few years. I had a few people ask me how we get our strawberries to have this many berries, and I think the secret is really just to wait till year two. These are going into their second spring, but I think we had transplanted them the fall before. So last year they really didn't do anything. Maybe we got like a few berries off of these plants, but now that this is the second spring, they are just loaded down with berries. So it's just one of those things that it takes a couple of years for you to see a really good harvest. We even have this plant that made its way into the pathway last year and I'm just gonna let it be because look at all of that fruit from a plant that just rooted itself into the pathway. So cool. Got lots of baby strawberries forming. We actually just picked our first two ripe ones this morning. At least the first two that weren't damaged by birds or slugs or something. So that was really cool. That means that we are right around the corner from full on strawberry harvest season. Here's some more baby blueberries forming. For our green stock on the bottom tier, we have our peppers. We have three shishitos and three jalapenos. They're looking really nice. They've transplanted well. They're starting to form flowers. In the next row up, I'm not really sure what happened, but these tomato plants are not looking great ever since we transplanted them. I already pulled off a few leaves that looked kind of like this. You can see how they look like they've been burned a little bit. I think it may be fertilizer burn, like maybe the manure we put in here was not composted enough. It was store-bought manure and it's supposed to be composted but maybe it was just a little bit too hot and it might have burned the lower leaves. This one looks okay but some of the ones that I've seen were just completely brown and shriveled up so I pulled those off. So I'm hoping that these plants still make it through. The new growth looks pretty nice and healthy on this one. This is the Tiny Tim Tomato. And then I have one of my cucumber transplants. You can see how it looks like the tips of those leaves are starting to have that burn. This is the Cherry Falls tomato. Lots of little baby tomatoes on there. But a lot of the leaves were kind of affected and I did have to take some of them off. So I hope that there are enough leaves to support the growth of the fruit. I pulled off some of these leaves here, but then the suckers are starting to grow. So hopefully those make it. They look mostly healthy. I've never had fertilizer or manure burn before, so I don't have too much experience. It could be something else, but that's kind of our suspicion of what happened. Yeah, this one like doesn't have many leaves left on it even. It's pretty much just the branch with the fruit, so I'm going to reseed these plants again just in case these don't make it. Tomatoes do grow pretty quickly, so I'll just have some backup replacements in case these ones don't make it. In the next few rows, we have 
our beans, which have been growing pretty nicely, along with some nasturtiums. And then we have more strawberries in these top two tiers, which are flowering now. So this is what I mean by strawberries not doing much the first year. These were just transplanted in here either late last fall or early this spring. And you can see how puny they are. So I think they're not gonna grow much this year, but by next year, hopefully they'll look kind of like the other second year strawberries that I showed you earlier. At the side of our raised bed garden, we have our row of potato pots. I have added more soil to these, so they are almost all filled up now. And you can see how much those potatoes have grown since when I planted them just about a month ago. Looking really healthy. And I can probably go in with even more soil to, just to fill it up to the top to make sure those potatoes are nice and covered and we get a good harvest off of them. I just ran out of potting soil, so I'll have to wait till I get some more, but they're looking really nice and healthy. On this trellis, we have some rattlesnake pole beans. Pretty good germination on those. Some were attacked by slugs, but other ones are looking good. I think we'll have enough that even if a few of them die, they'll cover up this trellis nicely though. And then we also have some baby radishes, still pretty young, but those have all germinated really nicely in front of the beans. We have a lot of perennial plants coming up in this middle area. This is echinacea and hyssop. Echinacea basically receives itself everywhere in our garden. We have our garlic chives here. And then we also had some volunteer sunflowers because this is where we had sunflowers last year. So they kind of just reseed themselves. And this is a nice area to have them. So I just let them go. We also popped in a couple of Nicotiana seedlings that I had leftovers of. I think that will fill in the space nicely because they do get really tall. More Echinacea, that looks like a new one that seeded itself. It's definitely a plant that kind of spreads, but I like to have it because it's so pretty. It's great for the pollinators and also the birds love to eat the seeds afterwards. On this trellis, our peas have grown up so tall. They're maybe like three feet tall right now. Still no flowers, but they're looking really nice and healthy. So hopefully soon we'll have those. And then we have more radishes at the base down here. They have a lot of holes in them. They don't look very good but it does look like the radishes are actually growing down there. Ooh, that looks pretty nice. I think I'll just go ahead and pick that now. Ooh. That's a nice one. I think this is the sparkler white tip radish. I didn't realize these were ready. I'll probably have to come in and harvest more of these later. Now onto the back of our garden where we have all of our in-ground beds. In this first bed here, we have a bunch of bush beans that we planted in a video. Pretty good germination on this one side. On the other side, it was kind of so-so. I think it was seeds that I saved myself, so maybe the seeds weren't as good. You can see more slug damage there as well. They have been such a major pest for us this year. We've been out in the garden a lot of nights just like picking off these tiny little baby slugs. Such a tedious and gross task, but they've been really eating a lot of our crops. So we're trying to get rid of as many of them as possible. Here you can see some of that damage, but I think these beans will make it through. They do grow pretty quickly. So as long as the new leaves are not eaten up, I think they'll make it through. Either later this week or next week, I'm gonna come in with my sweet potato slips and plant them in this middle area, which I had reserved for them as well. So that will fill in this row nicely. In the next bed, we have a row of broccoli, which has been quickly getting larger. This is probably our biggest one right now. This is Green Magic Hybrid Broccoli. Still don't see any heads forming yet. So I think we're a little bit away from a harvest, but they are doing pretty nicely. On either side of the broccoli, we planted radishes, which we have begun harvesting. So we did harvest a few of those the other day. You can see some of the white radishes here. And then on this side, we have some French breakfast radishes. Here's one of our artichokes that we transplanted. This is probably our best looking one, but they have been a favorite of the slugs, unfortunately. 
you can see a little bit of damage on this leaf but the fresh leaves are looking pretty good so I'm hoping it will make it through. Really neat looking leaves. This is my first time growing artichokes so I really hope that they make it through the slug attack. I want to see these plants get really big and beautiful. In the next row, I have garlic and some other stuff on this half, but first I'll start here where we just planted some potatoes. You can see the shoots coming up here. This was a potato that already had some pretty vigorous eyes, so it's still sticking up. We kind of buried them in like these trenches so that as they grow up, we can push the soil over and mound it on top of the new growth. So this is our second planting of potatoes, and then we have the ones that are in the pots by our raised beds, so those will be a little bit earlier, and that way we can kind of stagger our harvest a little bit. So we have more garlic here. I think a lot of this garlic is soft neck, and I had some of them not come up very well. The clothes were kind of dried up when I bought them, so I filled in the area with some carrots and also some beets, so that's what these are here. Carrots are doing nicely, and these are golden beets, which we have never had really good luck with, so this is like our last go, and hopefully we get something out of them. They're looking pretty good right now. Some of these garlic stalks are really thick, and some of them are a little bit smaller. It mostly depends on how big the clove is that you start with. The bigger your clove is, the more vigorous the plant will be, so this is probably a thicker clove. Overall, not quite as nice as the chestnut red ones in the other bed, but still pretty good. And since this is soft neck garlic, we won't get the scapes from them. But soft neck garlic does store a little bit longer, which is why we plant both of them. This garlic, instead of getting seed garlic, I just bought organic garlic from the supermarket and I got better germination off of that for, than from the seed garlic that I purchased that is specifically for planting. So that's definitely an option. The only thing is you don't know exactly what variety it is. The next row is where we have more tomatoes. These are our indeterminate tomatoes. This is the new trellis setup that I showed when we were planting these, but when I did these, I hadn't added the string yet to the tomatoes, so here's a little look at how that has been done. Hopefully you can see, it's kind of hard to see in the background, I know, but we have tomatoes on either side of where our T-posts are, and you can see we have them strung up to the PVC pipe up top. So from this angle you can kind of see how it forms like that V going up to the center. So that way we can have tomatoes on both sides. So I tied the string kind of close to the base of the tomato and then I just wrapped it around and around the stem so that it's nice and supported. And then as it grows I basically just continue to wrap the string around the stem like that. So far it's working pretty well. They've already grown a lot, I think, since we transplanted them. They're huge. This is a sungle tomato, and we have some baby tomatoes forming now. These tomatoes are really looking very healthy. I'm very happy with how they look here. So, so far so good. I just have to stay on top of pruning. So far, none of them have tried to form more than one stem anyway, so it's pretty easy. But if they do try to form a second stem, I'll have to take that off and leave it to just one stem so that I can keep wrapping this twine around. Lots of flowers on these. Unfortunately, same thing happened with these basils. Either a combination of cold or slugs. They just don't look the best, but I'm hoping that they'll bounce back with the new growth. They just look very sad right now, though. Here's one of my Paul Robeson tomato plants. Look at how big that flower is. It kind of looks like a little sun. In the next bed with our cattle panel trellis, we have our cucumbers here, along with just a couple of straggler tomatoes that I had left over. Most of the cucumbers are doing okay. Here's one of them here. We had a really windy day. This one snapped, so I'll probably just reseed it or put something else here. I sound like a broken record, but more slug damage. But I think these will pull through. I did have one plant, I think it was here. You can't even see where it was anymore because it was completely demolished by the slugs. I think I restarted it. This was probably um, one of my winter melon plants. Look at how sad and raggedy that looks. 
but it's okay. We still have time to reseed this stuff if they don't make it through. This is our bitter melon. So we'll just have to see how it goes right now. Then in this last row, we have our onions mostly. We do have one artichoke at the end here. This one was probably hit the hardest, but this new leaf looks really good. So I'm really hopeful for that. The leaves are really thick, pretty cool. And these onions are looking really good. If you remember when I planted these, they were the puniest little things. You could barely even see them if I like panned over this bed. You would hardly know there was something planted in there. And they're growing so nicely now. Pretty substantial. And I told you from those tiny little things that I planted that just look like single blades of grass, from here on out, they're really just gonna grow so quickly. And before you know it, we're gonna have some nice fat onions here. This was another area where we had interplanted some radishes and a lot of those are gone now. So we just have the last few that we're gonna be picking soon. This is our asparagus bed. We have a comfrey plant in the front and it's looking so nice right now. It is flowering and it has the prettiest dull shaped purple flowers and the bees absolutely love them. We've been harvesting a pretty good amount of asparagus and along the asparagus I've also put in a lot of strawberry plants. I had a bunch of runners from the fall that I dug up and transplanted here. They're looking really nice despite having been attacked by deer two or three times at this point they were just completely cut down and they just bounce back every time they're looking really good and some of these strawberries are starting to ripen this is a really nice big one almost ripe so this area i'm pretty excited to show because last month it was such a mess we just had a huge area that was tarped off here we hadn't planted in it for a whole year because we had some really bad weeds. So we covered it with tarps to try and kill it. And I think it worked pretty well. When we removed the tarp, it was really easy to clean up most of those weeds. I just like scraped right off the surface. They were all dried up. We put some weed fabric that we already had and we covered this up so that hopefully the weeds won't come through. And this whole row is now filled with zucchini and winter squash and pumpkins. We just cut these little holes in the weed fabric and then popped our zucchini plants in. So here is Golden Glory F1, looking so nice. When we transplanted these, they only had one or two leaves. They have grown so much since then, and that was only a couple of weeks ago. The whole row is looking really good. So I think this weed fabric will help us a lot, but also just having that tarp on here for a long time really did help. Um, so we ended up just pulling those tarps off of this row and we moved them to this row because we also had really bad weeds on this bed. And so we're just going to give this bed here a rest for at least half a year. Maybe we'll plant in it for the fall. Um, we'll just have to see if the weeds are all dead. But yeah, there's not going to be much going on here this year but we have started using this bed again and we have eight or nine zucchini plants along with four or five pumpkins. So if those do well, that will be plenty of food. I have this wire that we set up here. This is eight gauge wire. You can find this around like where you find chain link fence material, I believe, because I think that's kind of what it's used for, but it's really nice and sturdy. I've been loving this to hold our frost fabric up. And I have it uncovered right now just to show you, but we have been keeping this entire zucchini row covered because I don't want those squash vine borer moths to get to the plants while they're really young. Once the plants start to flower, we are going to take it off so that we get good pollination. But just for now, they don't need pollinators in here. So we're just keeping them covered up to protect them. And hopefully this will help us get a better harvest this year. Look at that pretty pattern on that leaf. So that's it for May's garden tour. I hope you guys enjoy this video and we'll see you again in the next one.